listen to me, don't think for six months. No thinking, no thinking, no valuing how many views, how many followers, no numbers, no thinking. Make, 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 make. Every little awesome creative thing running through your beautiful brain, make, make, make. Got it? Okay. You got your perspective. I just wanna be happy, don't you wanna be happy? It is tea time, as they call it here in New Jersey. April 1st, April Fool's Day, but no fucking fooling around here today. We've got a ton of guests. I'm super fired up. The show has built an enormous amount of momentum. Uh, We are now into day eight of this format. Uh, We are punching Corona in the fucking throat. Uh, I just wanna give a big shout out to all the prior callers. Uh, I've really enjoyed it. And a huge shout out to the Twitter community. I'm honestly going, you know, because I need so much action the t- during the two hours, I'm so zoned in. Uh, everybody who's on Twitter is bringing me so much value. So if you're tweeting, especially if you're taking a screenshot of the show and, um, and sharing it on Twitter uh, with a link, the Facebook link would mean the world to me. It is uh, in my, uh, it is in my Instagram profile. Actually, uh, Team Gary V, if you're watching right now, please change my uh, my URL right now on Twitter to the T uh, live stream on Facebook uh, URL so that people who are watching right now that go to Twitter can copy the URL from them. Hashtag T with Gary V if you're sharing on Twitter. And as we've been doing the whole time, uh, the last couple of days very intensely, if you're looking for a follow for me on Twitter or some more exposure, I am retweeting and following all along as people share the show, just like Maddie just did. And Aman Kumar, uh, he gets a little bit of a like. Actually, Aman, you're getting a follow. I am your 28th follower as you chill in my favorite place, New Delhi, India. That's right, Dustin, that is my favorite place. Let's get right into the show. Ben, how are you? I'm doing all right. Super well, my friend, where are you from? I live in Birmingham, but I actually grew up in the north east. I grew up in Maine, actually. Love it. So what can I answer for you, brother? No worries. Yeah. Oh, well, I've been following you for a while, and and I really appreciate everything you do. I just want to thank you first. Um, thank you, Ben. You're, I actually came and saw you live in 2015 in Birmingham, Alabama, and that really set the stage for me to even believe that social media was a thing that anybody did. I was like something my sister would do. I was like, <laughs> you know? I totally get it. I totally yeah. get it. And so now I've really, I've, I've only really been all in on it for about six months okay. and, and mostly just posting photos and everything like that. And I just, my, my question that I sent in was, you know, how do I not feel like an ass clown on video? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, you know, whenever I start posting, whenever I post myself, like I'm, I'm comfortable a- posting the stuff that I build. I'm, yes. I'm a contractor, but I always feel really contrived. Yeah. Know, if you had any, you know, I tricks. think, it, I think, I think it comes down to not valuing other people's opinions more than your own happiness and opportunity. The fact that there are so many millions of people right now that are aware that lives and podcasts and blogs and TikToks can change the course of their lives. Unlike you pre-15, the Birmingham talk, there are plenty of people who just don't even realize that you're, that you can go from zero to 200,000 and happiness, you know, can literally go from 80,000 and unhappy to 200,000 or happy, or even my favorite one from 313,000 a year in revenue for themselves, job or business and un, and unhappy to 196 and super happy, right? They both work, right? Happy is the common bond, not how much you take home. There's millions of people that don't even know that to be true if you go and make content on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. What breaks my heart is more your set. The millions, the hundreds of millions, tens of millions minimally that do know that that can happen, but value other people's random comments over living their best fucking life. It makes me, it, it drives me, Ben. It drives me. I have a, a huge thirst for giving back, a huge um, just need to 
bring value and conversate and build community and lead. Um, and, and this is what I've chose to talk about. There's so many things I could be doing, I'm sure as a human talking about leading on, it is that we are living in the greatest era of opportunity in the history of mankind. It is called the internet. You are sitting in a fucking car right now and I'm sitting in New Jersey. We are talking to each other and 10,000 people are watching. What are you like, right? Like, could you right, imagine? Right. No, I can't. Brother, listen to me. Like you have to go into a deep place. And I'm not joking when I say this, whether it's 50 therapy sessions, whether it's meditation, whether it's playing me on repeat, whether it's working out, whether it's writing things down, whether it's having a very difficult conversation with your mother, father, sister of like that, you know, or with yourself, you have to figure out how to put zero value in other people's opinions over your happiness. That doesn't mean don't listen to people. I, I listen to every comment. I, you know, I take feedback, but the thought of not feeling comfortable in my own skin because somebody might say that you're full of shit or you're not smart or you don't know what you're talking about. I'm trying to eliminate that. We are, the world is stuck in high school. Well, yeah. I mean, it's the comments from high school that re replay in your head of like some dick. You're nerdy, you suck. Exactly. Yeah. And, 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 and I, like, I know that I'm a badass architect and badass, you know, contractor. I can build literally anything. Um, it's amazing. And like, it's not like, I, have you started, have you started producing content on LinkedIn? Um, not really. I've been honestly just focused on the buck 80 with the, with uh, Instagram, Instagram, you know, hey ben, just to I'm telling you right now, there. today, today, post yeah. a, either a video or a written post about architecture or building on LinkedIn, the LinkedIn B2B scenario. It LinkedIn is like acting like Facebook in 2012. You could have zero followers. You don't even have to have a LinkedIn account as we sit here today. You go yeah. and sign up for one. You go and post because now you can do that in LinkedIn unlike, unlike five years ago. And you literally post something, a blueprint and, and you know, a picture of a blueprint and then write about it. I, I don't give a shit. Talk, talk to them as if you were talking to a friend that was interested in what you had to say. You will be blown away about what's going really? on in there. Yeah. And I would argue will lead to more business opportunities than Instagram within the first month. Okay. All right. So double down on LinkedIn. LinkedIn, LinkedIn all the way, go hard. Pictures of blueprints, write stories or thoughts or make a video. Okay. And, and really go deep inside yourself and be like, why the fuck would I give a fuck? Like to me, here's the thing that helps me. When somebody writes something negative, I feel compassion and sympathy for them. Not that they have power over me. For somebody to take the time, if their life is so shitty that they're watching you and then saying you suck, they, they're they hurting inside, just like bullies in fucking high school. They're hurting yeah. inside. Yeah, so it's, you gotta get over, I gotta get you over myself. You gotta get over yourself. You gotta get over to yourself in a very interesting way. I like that you said that. You gotta get over the facade or the way you've tried to paint yourself to the world, right? Because because vulnerability is a very powerful ingredient in being able to put yourself out there. I was almost hesitant to call this morning because I shit. I'm I'm dust. I'm losing him. One of the things right. you I'm put. I'm sorry. Right. No worries. Brother. Yeah, a little bit better. Go ahead. So. What I typically do is, you know, I put on this fake persona that isn't actually who I am. And I love you. I love you for having the strength to say that right now on this show. I yeah. love you for that. That means you're it's that true. Means, good. And that means you're fucking moments away because you fucking you could post for the next fucking year and not have this many people watch. So good news. Like now just start telling who you know what I mean? You're set. Like the fact that you can say that on this show right now means you're inches away from going there, you know? Yeah. But then you had, you said yesterday, you know, the thing that you're best at being is Gary V. And I was like, yes. well, that's, that's my fucking problem right there. Right. You're but, not best at being Ben Strout, the real right. Ben Strout. The real, yeah. Well, who I am. Listen, listen, you're one post away. You're one post you away. Go. Make one video and say, 
you could do it in one fucking false swoop. Be like, here's the real me. It'll change your life. I promise you 95% of your inner circle is gonna message you on Facebook or on text you and be like, I'm so proud of you. Because what nobody realizes when they're the fake version of themselves is that everybody already knows. That that's the fake version of you. A hundred percent. You're tr <laughs> My friends who are watching right now, you're not tricking anybody. You're fucking not tricking anybody. People in your inner no. circle already now. All right, Ben. Love you, pal. I wish Appreciate you well. You. Keep going. Good start. Ben, with some fire. God, I'm proud of him. He's moments away. Good job, Luke Kinsella. Nice little setup you got there. You get a retweet and a follow. I'm your 122nd follower. Annie Freed, good morning. You're getting a follow too in North Carolina. Annie, are you on wine text if you drink wine? All right, Sam. Sick exactly. and go. There yeah. we go, my man. I can yeah. hear you great. Awesome. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for taking the time to talk to me, man. Um, getting a hold of you the last couple of days has been honestly kind of surreal. Um, just had a lot going on and kind of lost track and not sure where to go from here. So um, my last question, or not my last question, my question is, um, so I, from watching you, you kind of remind me of my father with how headstrong you are and your motivation just doesn't stop, man. You're always going. Thank you. I don't know how that thank you. works. Um, and gratitude, so, gratitude and ambition. Yeah. Okay. You know? When you're grateful, when you're grateful for what you've got versus dwelling on what you don't have, it actually gives you energy. That's always been my biggest problem. Um, Cause I mean, my dad is extremely successful. So I never was born with out what I wanted, you know, Understood. Yes. I don't say that in a rude way. You no, know? no, no. You're saying I'm proud of you for saying that. It's actually hard to say that. So I'm proud of you. Keep going. Did it. Um, so that whole motivation thing of, well, I've already got it. So, you know, like, right. It's hard. It's hard to be hungry when you're yeah. fed. Um, yeah. And so, but, but the key is for you not to turn that a lot of kids in your spot right now are turning that into anger towards their parents instead of taking on the accountability that they didn't have to take the money. Yeah. Cause that, that we do battle a lot. Me and my mom, and my dad, we do battle a ton. And so and you battle about, and how does the battle go down? What's the cliche battle? Um, well, I got a few other, like, I have a couple mental issues going on. So a little bit of ADHD, some depression, anxiety, insomnia, things like that. Yep. So that causes a little bit of extra issues, you know? I appreciate um, that. I respect that. Yeah. Um, so it's, you know, just shit that I'm dealing with. Um, of course. It ends up causing problems, you know, cause problems with the girl and cause problems at home and stuff like that. Yep. yep. Uh, just extra issues that end up making everybody else a little bit more tense. And so I guess what I'm trying to get is how do I get that motivation to get that hunger to go figure out something to do when everybody else is kind of ticked off and you're kind of trying to make things less tough, you know, I, I mean, understand. I lost the job I've been trying to get for years um, due to this coronavirus thing. And now I'm like, shit, where do I go now? I, where you go now is we need to take a big, big step back and really like, I think what we need to frame up is happiness, you know, like, I think, unfortunately, like many people, people get caught up in financial success. Yeah, big time. Bro, it, Sam, it cannot be the North Star. It can't oh, yeah. be the North Star. You've got you've to probably, how old are you? 23. You know, reframing what you've been thinking probably for 18 years, you know, you know and probably 23 years subconsciously is, is difficult. But, you know, to me, I don't want you just checking the box or, you know, or just like appeasing. I think the thing that you need to spend a lot of time on is thinking about what genuinely would make you happy, you yeah. know? And I, and I, you know, and I think that, you know, you can't look at the world through your parents' eyes, society's eyes, your girl's eyes, a therapist's eyes. You've got to really look through the world through your eyes and then be strong enough to over communicate. I think you need to, there's, when you when one goes through that many things, anger and dwelling and and being sad about it manifests and it becomes momentum. When one can start looking at gratitude, like thank God I'm alive, thank God I even have a life. Uh, when people can go to like thank God I'm 23 and I have 80 more years to figure this out, I can figure this out at 33 and have a fucking unbelievable life. All of a sudden, the pressure of figuring it out right now goes away, right? When when one says 
you know, whether your parents say this or not, and obviously I've seen both versions, whether you need to make a lot of money or be successful, somebody can stand on their own two feet at 45,000 a year. You just have to have the humility to rent a shitty apartment, right? right? And not have a beat. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, no, you're not interrupting, please. Um, I think the coolest thing about my parents is even though with all the ex- success that he's had, he's never pushed it on us to, you got to be just as successful as me. You got to do this. Awesome. He, I want you to do what you want to do that makes you happy. That's, that's huge, brother. Do you, be- do you believe, do you believe him? Yeah. That's 100%. huge. Do you know well, how lucky you are? Moved out of the house at 15 to go to boarding school and halfway across the country because he wanted to. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, he's there. It's just, I feel like I'm the one that's not giving it back. Yeah, th- that's good. That's good that you understand that. So what, what you, like, I need to figure out what your ideology is. See, what I people don't, re- you know, to me, you know, I think a lot about like people's religion. Like my religion is the Jets, right? Like the one place that I am not rational, this is silly, but true. I see it. I see it, you know, is the Jets. I am not thinking rationally at a Jets game. I, I physically want to, I, I punched a Dolphins fan only 10 years ago. I like bumped a 12 year old wearing a Brady jersey, literally checked him into cocky terms, into a fence. This is things I've done. I've, I Great. curse old men out of the stadium. Um, I get into fights, like the people with the coats and the stands come in my section almost all the time. I'm completely inappropriate. I have no conscious. I'm, I'm, I'm not myself. Now, a lot of people are like that about religion. A lot of people, a lot of people, especially now, are like that about politics. There is, there is no rational conversation with me about Patriot fans, about Pittsburgh fans, about Dolphin fans. Like, like, you know, and so I understand having a chapter of my brain that is so ideological, so emotional, so irrational that I can't navigate through that calm place where I do in business, in life, in politics, in religion, in family. Like I can do that. I need to figure out what your ideology is that's beating you up. You're beating yourself up. Your entire tone and demeanor is you're shitting on yourself when you don't need to. Right. Yeah. Damn, you, you don't need to. We need to figure out whose opinions you value. Outside affirmation. Did you grow up the kind of kid that like gave a shit about what other kids in high school thought about you? Like, or, or you know, what were you saying, Wait. brother? Uh, I said way too much. I was agreeing with what you said. I, I still think about that shit. I was uh, relating myself to the last dude you were talking about, doing the fake me. Man, I've been doing that since middle school. You know what I mean? So it's just. Who's the, I, fake, who's the fake you and who's the real you? That. Give me, that, give me, give me a little something. Let's play with it for five seconds. Okay. Who's the fake? Give me a fake you, a couple bullets, and give me the real you, a couple bullets. Fake me is probably really quiet, sitting at the bar, not doing much, not talking to many people. I'm kind of a bit of an introvert, you know, always been that, I guess that stemmed from high school, not really wanting to like, not being able to put yourself out there. Yeah. I just never was that good. Like this, I'm terrified right now. There's way too many people. (laughs) Uh, I'm proud of you. I appreciate it. Um, So it's. um, That's fake you. Yeah. That's fake me. Real me. I love talking to people. I want to be around. I mean, that pretty much what you described being at a football game is me at a hockey game when we're playing the stupid penguins. So, <laughs> um, you know, have talk- you have you have you thought about starting a lightning podcast? No, never thought of that. Have I, you ever made have you ever made lightning content for an Instagram account or something? I've never really been much of a social media person. One time I mm-hmm. really started posting on social media was when Trump was getting elected and I actually mm-hmm. got a lot of shit for it. And so understood. I, yeah, I get it. Yeah, but um, I mean, it'd be interesting. I've been playing hockey for about twenty years now, so I, it's not- my intuition, seeing this show many times before, the interest guides you into the light. Yeah, mm-hmm. I've seen a lot, a lot of people struggling with a lot of stuff, and Star Trek, or Garage Sailing, or the Tampa Bay Lightning, or you know, has taken them into a place, you know. One hot take is I think you should start a media empire, your little own media empire around hockey and Tampa Bay Lightning culture. You know, all of a sudden, let me explain how it works out. You start this TikTok account, which is one of the places I go immediately. You start this Instagram account, you know, you start, you start a podcast, you call it Lightning Sam, 
right? Or some, some clever name, right? Um, bro, you will find your 11 hardcore Lightning fans in five minutes. All of a sudden, those are the guys and gals you're going to the bar with. Those are guys you're, and guys you're meeting at the parking lot. Those are the guys and gals you're meeting up on Zoom in three, in three weeks, in three weeks by using the right hashtags, by writing the right post about the goalie, by reminiscing about the Stanley Cup run. In three weeks, you've got nine new friends who fucking love the thing you love the most. I can talk Jets football in my Jets drive with my friends and family 24 hours a day. Yeah. I think your great love is what's going to pull you out. Okay. Yeah, that was what I had found with my job my job that I just got. And I love beer. <laughs> uh, who doesn't, right? And I had gotten into a brewery. It was just grunt work, cleaning kegs. And, but you, you know, loved it. I loved it, man. It was, I hated serving tables. That, oh God, I hated being a server. <laughs> and so Listen I, to me. Listen to me. Yeah. The lightning. Do it. I, I think that's an awesome idea. I've honestly been thinking about doing a podcast or something. I just didn't know if anybody wanted to listen to my bullshit, you know? Definitely, there's a there's definitely this tiny, incredibly passionate group of Lightning fans that 100% want to. Yeah. I mean, and I guess what else? Yeah. You DMing on Instagram now, former players from the Stanley Cup team, 14 of them want to be on the podcast because you know this, hockey players don't get that at bat like that. That's true. A third line right winger on the fucking chip on that team is not fucking known. But you know who he is. Yeah. I know I who think- Stefan Mateau is from 1994 Rangers life. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Okay. I know who Doug Wade is. I know Tony Granato. I yeah. know Mike Gardner. I know my Rangers that maybe a lot of people wouldn't know from my era. So punchline is your passion will pull you the fuck out. Your passion will pull you out. I'm telling you, go all in, create a Twitter, a TikTok, an Instagram, and start a YouTube podcast thing and just fucking go. I'm sure you have one or two friends that like the lightning as well, right? Yeah, totally. I mean, yeah, I mean whole- just have, good. Just have them on the fucking first show. What's your favorite lightning story? Who, you know, what was your favorite? What's the, when's the first, did you ever cry? What was the worst moment? Best moment? When we come back, what do you think about this? Season? Like, just fucking go. Just get immersed in making content about the lightning. Go find videos on YouTube, clip them, post on your Instagram, write something. I remember this play. I was 13. I fucking punched a hole in the wall. Like, whatever. Okay. Just yeah. immerse yourself in your passion because Ooh. if you make 65000 a year selling hoodies, and having appearance fees, doing that, you'll be the happiest fucking boy on earth. That'd be something I'd want to do too. Do it, Sam. I love you, brother. Good luck. And thank you again. You're welcome, man. Keep watching, Sam. Keep keep listening to the positivity and the practicality. Let me okay. pump in your fucking ears for a, a couple of years here. I'll fucking pull you out, brother. I promise. What about it. Thank you, Gary. You're welcome, bro. Whew. Getting deep here on uh, Tea with Gary B. Amara, how are you? Hi, Gary. How are you? Oh, I'm well, where such are... a huge. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Um, I'm a huge fan. I'm probably the only Pakistani American mom who's a WWE fan that you'll ever meet. Um, <laughs> I wanted to ask you a question um a little bit background about me i was a stay-at-home mom for a bunch of years um i started my own blog about couponing and how to save money mostly for moms every mom was learning how to um save money and learn how to basically you know get diapers and and baby clothes for cheap i did that for a couple of years i worked full time for a couple of years. My kids are a little bit older now. Um, and I accidentally started a business last summer. <laughs> so my uncle went um, for the pilgrimage to Mecca, um, to Hajj. And when he did that, um, for a gift for him when he came back was I made him a flower garland. And this is like an old school Pakistani um, tradition. And uh, I made these garlands for him. And can you still hear me? Sure, I sure can. I'm captivated okay. by this story. Keep going. I love the <laughs> I I love heritage niches that can be more broad than people realize. So I kind of know where you're going. So I'm just listening. 
Yeah, so he, um, I, I looked around to see where I could buy garlands from. I didn't, I couldn't find anyone in New York. Like I found one person all the way in Queens. I didn't have time to go all the way over there. So my uncle was like, I'll buy a couple from you if you make them. So I said, okay. And I've made them before, but not, not really like, you know, going into it. And I made like 13 or 14 for a bunch of family members. Everybody fell in love. They were like, these are so beautiful. You need to sell these. You need to sell these. So I posted them in this Muslim networking group. Um, and, you know, I got a lot of inquiries and people were asking me, but it was towards the end of the season. So I wasn't going to get a lot of orders. Um, and all of a sudden I got my first order from a bride who wanted to wear it for her wedding. And I was so excited. And then I started getting other orders from brides and other orders from brides. And I put it on Instagram and I really wasn't like trying to promote it hardcore. It was my whole family, like literally somebody asking, where can I get a garland? They were tagging me. They were like, you have to ask her. She makes great garland. So I'm really lucky that I have like extended family, um, you know, just blasting my work out there. Um, I started on Instagram. I, you know, I've been getting orders. I, I'm booked through June. Um, I actually have people putting deposits down from January to June. Um, uh, uh, unfortunately, now because of the situation, I had to, you know, a lot of my brides had to postpone. I'm really lucky that every bride that I've met has been super sweet. I haven't had to deal with the bridezilla. Um, and, you know, for me, it's just, I like doing it because, for me to be a part of somebody's special day, like a little piece Huge. of my art to be a part of somebody's special day, it's I, it's a blessing to me. Um, I literally, literally like, every time, every time we had a customer buy wine from us for their wedding or bar mitzvah or what have you, like I would always get a little pep in my step because I knew it was a special day. And the, right. and, and clothes is way more powerful than wine, so I totally get it. Go ahead. So, you know, these are, these are fresh flower garlands. They're, they look like lays almost. And I've expanded it into like fresh flower jewelry for these women's henna ceremonies and, you know, hair pieces. And, and, you know, it's not huge, but I'm not looking to make it huge. Like I like to focus on one piece at a time. It's custom so what's, made at the so time. What's, yeah. So what's the question? So, Cause this is going great. My question, my question now is that because I'm not getting customers and I'm not, I don't have flowers on hand. What kind of content should I be creating just to keep that my myself visible to a lot of people? Um, I think that there's a couple of things I would do. One, I would consider starting a Facebook group for the community around okay. the around the culture of these products. And so, just starting a Facebook group just to talk, just to like people staying in touch. I think that you know, like I've been talking about it all week and last week story time, like just a video of you of how this even happened is a good comic book number one, first album. I would put out that content. Uh, you could absolutely post right now on your Instagram or anywhere else you have a community or email and say, hey, does anybody wanna come on and do a video with me, a live stream where I can answer questions about it? Like it now it is about you. You don't have the flowers, you don't have the product. You're gonna have to make it about you your family's journey, you know, from Pakistan to the States, uh, store, you know, put on you, you, extended family allows you to put on all of them. Like this is the time to do story time and, okay. and, you know, a video of how you think about it. Like what happened, the process, people love the process, you know, just like a story. When I sit down, I can, I don't know why, but if I look at the bride's photo or look, read the email, I just immediately see a vision and I start working and, you know, like, this is, yeah. it's time, it's a, it's about you now. Like the same way okay. that we fell in love in America about Vera Wang and her story and right. her starting it at 40 and coming up the ranks. And we, we need to, this little subset needs to fall in love with you. Okay. So what do you think about talking to other wedding vendors and kind of talking about what's going on now and like the best course of action for brides? A hundred percent. Yeah, if you want to yeah. if you want to level up and be the dinner host of a macro wedding conversation, and by DMing a hundred people a day, biz deving that way, I think that's incredible. Yeah, definitely. I love. I mean, and I just want to shout out to all the, the other brown moms who are entrepreneurs because I'm finding them like crazy, and I'm supporting them, and I'm tagging them, and I'm sharing their stories, and I'm so proud to see so many women coming. Amara. You know, coming up and just coming over stereotypes. I love it. It's so amazing. 
unlimited, like, like, like just, you know, so many of the subcultures of, of brown, you know, culture are so entrepreneurial by nature. And the internet has allowed mom to thrive in a way that, you know, mom couldn't in 1974. And this is why I keep going back to gratitude, the fucking internet, like, come on, imagine Corona with pre-internet. Like we yeah. get sick of television, music, and video games pretty quickly in 1987. So like, you know, like what a blessing. Yeah, we can definitely still connect with each other. And our parents and grandparents didn't have that opportunity during times of- You know, what's another thing back to immigrant culture. So many people are connecting with their loved ones now on Zoom and Google Hangouts because, you know, that 60, 70, 80, 90 year old set is being forced to learn some technologies that they've pushed against and they're loving it. And so that's yeah. been a great gift. That's been a great gift. The amount of people that are going to interact with their grandma back home in the old country a hundred times more over the next three years before she passes, that would have never happened on Corona because it was a once every six months phone call. And now it's a once a week Zoom on Friday nights. It's a, it's a blessing. There's so many blessings that are coming. I, my grandfather used to send audio cassettes to my dad. Like that's old school. Like he used to record an audio cassette because they didn't have a phone. So like when my parents came to America, they wrote relatives, how we they, can connect they, and we can FaceTime. They wrote yeah. letters. letters. It took letters that letters, took three yeah. months to get here. I mean, so anyway. Yeah. All right, Amara, proud of you. Talk Thank to you, you soon. Thank you so much, Gary. Bye. -bye. You're Thank welcome. Thank you. All right, let's see who's Jan Anthony Fernandez in the building again. Good to see that, my aunt. Uh, if you're watching on Facebook right now uh, for the 4,000 plus, please hit the share button and let's get some of your friends and family onto this show. There are some gifts and jewels being dropped. Let's keep this going. Hey, Lindsay. Hi, Gary. How are, How you? are you? I'm well, I'm doing, and you? I'm doing good, hanging in there. How's Where your are you from? Doing? I'm from the Jersey Shore, so kind of close to you, yeah. Um, so I wanted to tell you how I actually found you. You showed up on my Instagram Explore, like maybe over the summer. And it was when you were doing, uh, like flea, uh, uh, yard sailing. Um, so that's kind of like my business. That's what I started out doing. Um, I grew up with a, from a teen mom. So I lived with my grandparents, my mom, like we didn't, we were good. Things were covered, but like at the end of the month, there wasn't always a lot left over. So we were always like super, always out like at the flea markets or just trying to make things work. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I was like entrepreneurial. And then I went to college for advertising and then it was like my school year we were leaving and I noticed people were throwing furniture away on the curb at the end of the year. And I was like, um, <laughs> my neighbor who had a pickup truck, I just grabbed all the furniture. I brought it home and I sold it on Craigslist and like some of it, I painted some of it. I sold it as is. And then I was like, this is insane. And so, yeah, so I worked in corporate America for 10 years, but like painting furniture and reselling it on Craigslist and now Facebook Marketplace was always like my side hustle. Your side hustle. Yeah, and then three years ago I had my son and I was like, oh man, I don't wanna leave and go to work and then come home and be miserable. So I'm just gonna like go full force into my business. Okay. So I did, yeah. So it kind of went from like painting furniture and just posting it on Craigslist to like, you know, kind of getting a little bit of notoriety in my town. And then I was taking on commission work. And then I was looking for places to get like stuff to put on my furniture to take pictures. So then I kind of got into antiques and it kind of like spiraled. Um, and then I was like, maybe I should open a brick and mortar store. But then I was like, oh, I don't know, it's all a big commitment. So then I found an antique mall actually in Point Pleasant, New Jersey. So I pay them I rent it. and I have a booth there. And I was like, yes, this is so smart and strategic. I've been buying <laughs> my time. I'm only paying like 550 bucks a month on my rent. I don't have to be there. I don't have to worry about sales. I can just get my stuff, bring it there, do the stuff I love, which is hunting for the stuff and mm -hmm. being creative. And then coronavirus happened and my store closed and I still have to come up with my rent. And I'm like, I can't go to the flea markets. I can't go to anywhere and we're kind of just like stuck in the house and I'm like, okay, Fuck. what am I going to do? Yeah. And like my art and like, and I know you get it. Cause I saw it in your face when you were like going to 
flea markets. Like it's like the thrill of the hunt. Like you must uh-huh. get a client. Like it's like I'm gonna pull. Like you pull something out. And you're like, this was two dollars. I could sell this for fifty. And like, I can't do that anymore. So it's almost like you're like a caged animal. I mean, I'm so devastated that we're gonna miss, you know, town wide garage sale season here in yeah. Jersey for April and May, you can't even imagine. It's like running through my mind left and right. A uh, couple things stand out. One, uh, you can definitely garage sale in your own home. Okay. Uh, I think people are, you know, it's unlikely that you have as much stuff as most people because you actually get it. So, you know. I've been in the house, my husband's like, I don't get used to anything because I know you're gonna sell it out from under me. Like, yeah, I, I, love, I love you for that. So one, and I mean this, really going through everything that's in the house and maybe getting a little bit of that flip life out of yeah. your system. Uh, but two, I have a little bit of an idea, Lens. I think that you can create a little 15 or $20 course on okay. how, and I think your angle is like flipping and creativity. I think you can put together, you know, an 80, 90 page PDF. Okay. Right? And then also layer, and then, market it like this. Hey, I've created an 85 page book and I'm doing a once a week, one hour Zoom or Google Hangout. Okay. And it costs 90 bucks and you get the book and you get me for, you know, for four sessions or however you want to play it. Maybe you build up the momentum and launch it in a month because it's taking you some time to put the PDF together. Okay. I think what you do which is a little bit more Etsy thrift store creative. It's not just what I do, which is like buy stuff to animals, sell stuff to animals. Yeah. But you know, There's you're doing involved you're in doing it. a lot of creativity and the DIY world, you know, I was laughing when you said I'm not an entrepreneur. I'm like you are an entrepreneur and a creative one. And so I, my intuition is you have the potential of having a community through your inbox, your email, what I mean by that, your your yeah. cell phone numbers, your texts. I don't know what you do on social if you've got a little bit of following anywhere, yeah, but I, I think if following, I think if you put out like, hey, here's an eighty-nine dollar program where you get an eighty-page PDF, sixty, forty, one hundred twelve, and you get four one-hour sessions with me live, you okay. know, in the in the month from mid-April to mid-May, I have a funny feeling you would do really well. Okay. I just worry because my audience now is like super local to the Jersey Shore, people that I've met at like markets that I've done. And they're like, but, they're but, but, going to buy from me. Like they, and, and then at the same time, you, I'm like. But, yeah, but do you I don't know how many of them want to be an entrepreneur and want to do what you're doing. And yeah. the fact that you're giving away all your best advice and Q&A access. Uh, uh, and not to mention that, okay, so Pam in Red Bank sees it but then she tags her sister, Susan, okay. in Australia, who's been wanting to do something like this and is creative. And she puts her username in the comments and then she, she's the one that actually buys the $89 you know, ebook and access. Okay. It is a good point. And then like, in terms of like, I just feel awkward right now, like hawking pieces that I'm working on, like- yeah. You know? I think I think you just write I think you just write the copy up front, which is like first and foremost, I hope everybody's healthy. I have no, you know, for, you know, obviously all of us are going through this struggle. So please, before you even look at this desk, you know, yeah. know that I'm I'm super empathetic and and care about everybody first and foremost. But at the same token, I'm also trying to provide for my family. And so here's my desk. I think if you if you write the hedge in the first two sentences, I think it will help you. Okay, cool. I'll give it a shot. All right. Good luck, guys. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye bye. All right. Let's keep this going. Polly, thank you so much. Big shout out to Charlie Whitmore with the share. He gets a follow, number 437. Hello. Buenos dias. Oh Buenos my God. Dias. Hear me. My heart is pounding really fast and I help people deal with their nerves and their confidence. Thank you You're so very sweet. much. You're welcome. What's your name, I'm darling? Marissa. Marissa, nice to meet Marissa you. Marissa Coscarelli. I am the daughter of Dominican immigrants into Washington Heights, the wife of an Italian immigrant himself, came when he was 11. And I, I knew about you and followed you, you know, dabbled in your work at first and then I saw you with Sasha this weekend 
and you guys just stole my heart. So <laughs> thank you so much for your authenticity and everything. I am a white chocolate mompreneur. So a Dominican white woman, brown woman, whatever, I don't give a shit. I don't believe in labels. It puts us in boxes. My passion, um, I came from a background, I was a, a performing professional ballet and contemporary dancer with Ballet Hispanic wow. of New York and Twyla Tharp and a bunch of great people. That was like volume one. Um, I married Joe 33 years ago. We became best friends 40 years ago in Parlin, New Jersey. Um, you are in a photo on my nephews, my best friend's son's Facebook. They ran into you guys recycling in Nutley one day, Michael and Nicholas Licamelli. He's a physical therapist and a carpenter. You remember them? We were flipping. It was when I was doing trash oh, talk. I do remember yeah. it. We're, we're very dear friends. Leslie and I, their mother, are friends since the third grade and the father is friends it. with my husband since the sixth grade. Just a little background I on the people it. that I we are the community, and why yeah. I connect with you. Um, my work then led me to the fitness world where I was what they call a lifestyle director. I personal trained, I ran um, spas and fitness centers in luxury condos and hotels in Miami, New York. And I live in Palm Beach now. Uh, when we left New York and New Jersey, we were like the escaping the 36 first cousins. It was a big deal. My in-laws cried like they were at our funeral. And we built a house near St. Augustine and I started a little dance studio in my house. And eventually I had a, a brick and mortar at a Publix Plaza and I had over mm -hmm. 250 students. Mm -hmm. Joe and I have relocated almost 19 times because wow. he's in the auto industry and he became a fixer. Like I'll fix mm. the dealership or you'll sell it or whatever. I got it. He's still in that work 33 years later, 32 years later. We've got two amazing kids, Alyssa in the city on Instagram, 310K followers. Wow. She's a fashion stylist, editor, uh, curator, amazing, 26. Joseph, 31, pop culture, music journalist for the New York Times. Diary of a song he made up for them, FaceTiming with pop artists and their producers on a quick FaceTime that he runs as a video for them, and a Simon & Schuster book deal for him. I fell in love with Tom Levine yesterday, and I emailed mm. him and said, I will be your confidence coach. I love no that. charge, and he said, I'll book a call. So we're in touch. I love that. I love um, that. I, I love saw that. my son and Tom minus, minus the love for himself. I gave a mm. keynote. Um, uh, at a event a few years ago that changed my coaching business. My business is mccoaching.life. I started it, it should be Maritza Coscarelli coaching. I get that, uh, that's coming. I'm People so know me by name. But what I realized during COVID to get to my question, um, how am I building this business? I have, I invested when I had nothing on plastic. I invested in one of the best business coaches and mindset coaches, Fabienne Fredrickson of Boldheart, who is speaking all of, uh, honor to you lately. I was on a live with her Q&A Saturday and she was saying jab, 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 right hook, like pick it up now. Gary's got me doing a lot more repurposing and she has a multi-million dollar business, Fabienne with Boldheart. So I invested what I didn't have in that business coach because I was spinning wheels alone thinking that I'm supposed to be self-sufficient, the immigrant mindset, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, the artist mm -hmm. mindset. I'll figure it out. So that's mm -hmm. been life changing, but I know I'm still not generous enough, still not doing all the things. The question I had texted in was if you could tell me one thing around content, around my differentiator, around how to put myself out in a big way. You know, when you say your big dream, I have expanded myself enough to say I am I don't even like saying the Tony Robbins because I just want to say the Maritza Coscarelli of women, middle age, and a few amazing men to fall in love with themselves, to get clear on their messaging and to persevere to the dream that they want. Because I've lived several dreams. I don't have money to show for it, but I got a lot of heart and I'm going to get the money because I'm going to help so many people. Let me, let me promise you this. If you've had enough money to pay the bills enough to have a lot of heart, you fucking won. <laughs> Marissa, I'm being very serious with you. Like A, just even thinking about business coaches and how entrepreneurial you are and just listening. Before, before I go into the answer and I have very good insight, I think it's gonna help you. I really, really wanna make sure, like, like I promise you, you were just so happy and charismatic right now. Like I can't wait to look at the Twitter stream in between your call and the next one because you just made half the audience fall in love with you. I just wanna say this very slowly. It's very important to me. Um, 
much like Joe, like fixes, like when you go in, you operate, you look at where they're wasting money, who the bad employees are. It's like bar rescue, right? You come in, you audit and you fix it, right? And then they either flip it. I, I think of it that practical. When I when I hear your story, please do not put, you know, putting money in the bank or buying something bigger on a pedestal. You've got way too much happiness pouring out of you. So I'm a little bit less worried about, and, and actually, you know, I'm really excited right now because it's going to lead to my answer. Your the biggest issue a coach has with the world I live in is subconsciously, even when they're sweet as fucking pie, like you are subconsciously 99% of their content that they put out on the internet is in the intent of a lead gen to get them to sign up. You've been in subscription business your whole life, right? You had the studio, 250 people, they were paying a monthly fee to go there right? You're in a coaching framework now, which I'm sure sits in probably a monthly fee or a one-time fee. And what, what people struggle with is when they're putting out an Instagram, a YouTube, starting a podcast, doing Zooms and Hangouts like this, you know, it, you, know, con- you know, practically you understand that it is putting yourself out there and putting out good information. The big reason I've been able to ascend to a different level than the far majority of people that look like me is because I have zero intent to get $1 from you. And that's the end, right? You have two children, I do as well. That's called unconditional love. As much as we love our friends, as much as we love our best friends that we've known since third grade, we would cut those people for our children, right? It's just the way it is. In that, because you do love that friend that you've had since third grade, you do love that first cousin, you do love other people, in that little delta of your children versus the everybody else is the magic. And that is the small variance that I need for, I need you to understand the following, that you need to produce unlimited content and unlimited access. Let people go on Zoom with you. It holds a hundred people. You just talk, you just shoot the shit. If you get to a place mentally where you could do a one or two hour Facebook Live or Zoom or, or Hangout and have zero mentions, of your coaching, zero, you will be stunned by how much that leads to actual coaching. I love that. I can commit to that. I have no, like, I don't feel any resistance or reservations to that. I do click to something that leads to one more quick thing that will Please. allow the shift Please. to really happen, Please. which is immediately like from this high, I got this, like the deflation of a balloon when it goes, I got that around, okay, so I come out there and I got two or three people here and there. And I have a lot of people I've I've met networking live that are now networking with me on Zoom. I was on a BNI at seven o'clock this morning, like the work ethic is there. And those people were sending me texts during the BNI, like, we love you so much. We're so happy you're part, part of our club. Thank you for what you do for us, right? But I, the attraction, like I study, I'm a yogi of 20 years and meditator. I study law of attraction, all of that. I get that work. And I'm wondering, what is the missing link right now? What is the shift I have to make to attract? And it's the intent. probably getting out in a bigger way. Oh, yes. I'm but I think, it's the, I think it's the intent. You know, right now you're so, and I love where you're at. I think it's a, I think it's not a bad thing, but I do think it's a thing. I think the intent is I'm going to build, I'm going to do this thing. And then four people are going to sign up for coaching. You're not wrong. I know Marissa. Right. I, I, I know I see to my not. husband. I know you're right. I know I'm not that person. I'm no, not that that's, person. It's like I you'll got. Pre- you'll, pre- you'll appreciate this. I actually know that, which is why I'm giving you this advice. I said, I don't blame you for that. You're trying to build a business. It's just that I need you to ch- separate church and state. When you make content, you are Maritza full heart. And then you come out of it when you're done and maybe there'll be some things there to do business. Jab, 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 right hook. Give, give, give. And then you can ask and something will happen. What I'm very good at, I'll give you an example. I put out everything for free, have no coaching, have no mastermind, have no island. It's all fucking free. Then occasionally I put out things like, hey, would you sign up for wine text and buy wine for my dad's business? Thank you, thank you. (laughs) And then people that have gone 
and taken all the content for free and changed their financial and happiness life will still go to Publix and Ralph's and BevMo and Total Wine and buy wine and not buy from wine text. And the fact that I am not disappointed in that is why I win. There are hundreds of thousands of people, there are thousands of people watching right now who've gotten extraordinary levels of value from me, who buy wine at the supermarket on wine.com and have not signed up for wine text to support my dad, not even me. And, and I'm okay with that. That, that is the punchline. That's the, you wanna talk about a fucking secret? Not being disappointed when you've given so much and somebody hasn't had the ability to connect the dots, to give a little bit back, to put a little karma back into you, and you're still not disappointed in them, and you're still not sad for yourself. Do you know how many people who sell courses and all this, like, 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 the, like the lowest common denominator, guy and gal out there making millions, selling bullshit, make fun of me behind my back in, that, in those inner circles because they think they make so much more money than me? They're fucking confused, Maritza. They're fucking confused. Yeah. A, I'm gonna make way more money than them because I'm more talented. B, I'm gonna be around forever. They're not. C, I'm a better human being than putting more kindness into the world. They're not. You know, when I texted again yesterday, one of the things I said as a new question was, I'm open, I want Gary to call me on my bullshit. And it's so weird when we know things intellectually, but we're not really rolling that way. So for the last three Gary, uh, Tea with Gary V's I've been on, and at the same time, I'm like, oh shit, two hours in my day, like I'm trying to work and listen and whatever. But my point is this, I know for sure, because I wrote a blog and I don't write blogs regularly, I'm gonna get on it, but I wrote Radical Generosity. I know the keys mm. to happiness and the first one of them is Radical Generosity. And I mean radical, and I, yet I'm not practicing it. I say, I show people how to show up authentically. I am authentic, it's who I am, right? But I say I do it so they lead with heart. Like my heart is freaking open. I see it, I see it, I see it. I'm not it. And I'm not it's, saying, Marissa, come, it, let me all, support also, and guide you. Yeah. Also, it's about expectations. Yeah. I don't have I don't have the expectation for anybody to do anything in return for something. I don't give. Okay. Giving is giving. And and right now in coaching land, I see a lot of sweet people manipulating. manipulating. They're half their they're half their best selves because if they leave a little back, they hope the person comes in and pays them 200 bucks a month. Can I just say one little thing, Gary, about my story that just dropped in and so it feels like I'm compelled to share it? So I had suicidal ideation a lot of times. Uh, when Joe and I first got married, there was a major betrayal. He had a serious addictive problem and hid it from me for all the years we dated. And it hit us. And he left me a Dear John note. First year of marriage, leases up. I call the building management. And I said, listen, I have a personal problem crying, right? And yeah. I said, uh, uh, how do I renew my lease? They said, honey, your lease was up yesterday. You got to be out in two days. Picked up the phone and called the Licamellis, best friends, called my parents pack the boxes. He said, I can't tell you where I am because I'm in deep shit and I don't want you to be in trouble. Like these things, these kind of things happened in 08, bought the freaking big mm. McMansion dream home. He worked for General Motors. I tried to a mortgage adjustment on my own. I nearly took my own life thinking that a freaking thing was worth it, but it was really about what will I tell the family? What will I tell my kids? Like I have other people's opinions. I used to think that I didn't survive anything because I didn't have breast cancer or something. I have survived all that and learned to thrive. I wake up ready to go. And I know that that's a value to people. It isn't about me. It's about, we've all got resilience. So Marissa, and so Marissa inside us. Yeah. put that out for free. Yeah. And then if they happen to want to have one-on-one -on -one access to you, mm -hmm. then 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 mazel tov. But if you don't put out for free, yeah. If you don't put that out for free, you'll never attract because the intent is to funnel them. Yeah. Not to save them. I got it. I got the takeaway and I got what I wanted because I wanted Church and state. Church and state. Give, so give, 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 and then something's going to happen. Like That's a it. total shift right now is happening and I am going to act on it today. I love you. Good luck. I, I love can't you wait to hear you. Thank you Bye -bye. so much. You're welcome so much. That was a good one. I think that's going to help a lot of people who are trying to sell, who are also nice people. Uh, man, this is great. Christy Richards, thanks for watching. Thank you so much. Oh, Andy Freed with the 
with the, uh, I love this. This is the, this right here is my favorite screen, the wine text confirmation. Dustin, it's more fun for me to get people to sign up for wine text for my dad because he gets so excited at night when I see him here because I'm hanging with him during this thing. Like 84, poor, you know, it's literally more fun for, like literally we closed like a $4 million piece of business the other day and like, three people signing up right now and sharing on Twitter the confirmation screen to wine text is more exciting than that deal. That's when you know what you're about. Yeah, I kind of get it. All right, let's keep it going. Hello. Hello, Lana, how are you? Hi, it's Lana, like Lana Bananas. <laughs> Lana, it's such a pleasure. Lynn, I love your background. I want to sell all of it on eBay. Well, look, I'm making, I'm making that. You're so amazing. Thank you for doing that. Uh, it's a lot more time consuming than I thought, but obviously I've got plenty of fabric, so, and I'm home. I'm home from work. Um, I'm fortunate, um, I'm nervous. <laughs> I'm fortunate that I have a job that I actually was not laid off. Um, I'm sent home and I'm still doing paid. Um, so I'm grateful. I'm very grateful for that. And, um, yeah. So um, <laughs> I what can I, I what can I help you with? I ha my question, my original question, actually has been answered pretty much because I've been watching. Um, I have you know a great job that I've had for for a long time, a career, and uh, but my whole life I have. Um, stuff spins in my head, all of these ideas, and I harass and torture my family with, oh, I should do this, oh, I could do this, or like my kids, oh, you guys should do this. Um, and um, I finally, a lot of personal things happen, and I'm a place in my life where I, I realize that all of my decisions, um, my teens have been based on fear, you know, all of that, the stuff that I went through. And it was really- It makes sense, it, it makes sense, people, people that, love the word should are always scared yeah yeah isn't that funny and i never realized and i mean all of these choices and bad decisions like i can go back to where you know that i've always been like oh it's him you know my husband or it's my job's in it my boss is an asshole or whatever but i finally realized that all of those things i chose to be in like for whatever reason and that yep. i was always afraid to change it um and once i figured that out that I don't have to stay in this job. I don't have to stay in this marriage or whatever it was. Um, it was profound. I had like this major breakdown, you know, hysterical, let it all out. And like, yep. I, I know that I can be better, that I am better and all of that. So it's been very exciting actually for me because now I'm like, I kind of started with something small, like losing weight, you know, middle-aged women can't lose weight and, and everything. And I was actually able to do that. Um, and then I thought, well, if I can do that, what else can I do that I, that would be possible, right? All these things. I love that. Like running a marathon. I freaking hate running. I hate running more than anything. I was an athlete in high school. I hated running. Lana, have you have you thought about sharing this and putting out content and inspiring others? Because what you're doing takes an enormous amount of courage and I'm getting inspired in the last 45 seconds. <laughs> Um, you know, I have, I shared a lot with, with close people who, um, you know, because I I'll tell you, that. because I'll tell you, you're inherently private. You know, I can even tell in this thing. So like putting that out more, I actually think is going to lead to more light to more happiness. Sure. Sure. Um, and I'm totally open for that. Um, and so each kind of thing that I'd like to set this goal and I go, I know that I can set a goal and matter of figuring out what I have to do to get there. Instead of thinking, oh, it's 15 and I'll never be able to do it. Especially at 50, because even in my 30s, I have five kids. Like it's, you know, I've already made my bed. This is going to be my life. I can't do all of these things that I always thought I was going to do. Um, but that was you part got time. of it. Yeah, this mm -hmm. realization was I and my kids are adults now. You know, I, I have my whole life. I can choose what I want to do. I can Lana, how did, how did you first find my content? <laughs> by accident I was you know um, like a video I was probably watching a video and you know how it'll start rolling on Facebook and then there you were and the first one was actually when you were talking about college and kids because I have mm. five kids that I'm constantly like trying to you know encourage 
and mm -hmm. um, when you were talking about college not being worthwhile, um, it really hit me because I've been pushing them, you know, a couple of them just need to go to school, and so that was very. It hit you. You you realized that college is not for everyone. Yeah, and, and it's totally true, and I get that. So um, that was probably a relief for them because now I'm like, you know, what do you want to do? Like, I, I'm willing to support whatever it is that you want to do. So it started with that, and I sent it to my sister. Who's, who's all three, three of us struggle with our kids, and they, why aren't they getting better grades? And they've got to go to the school, and you know, all of the crap. And it's so stressful for us, probably, you know. Stressful for us that we carry, and um, it's and 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 there, there's no there's no there's no correlation between good grades and happiness, right. and that is something that parents have to learn. The end. Right, I agree, and I've figured that out now. Looking back, because my kids are adults, that out of everything that I wish I would have done better is their confidence. You know, just there that that that's it. Self esteem, self esteem, self esteem. Yeah. Oh my gosh, and I feel like. In my attempt to encourage and you know push them, I think that I failed because they don't. Well, here's good news. Here's the good news. The good news, in the same way that you kind of had this awakening, no more. Like Lana, out of this call, which obviously your questions got answered, so now we're just riffing. Listen to me. Don't dwell. Just do. Right. No dwelling. Just do it. Okay. It doesn't matter how you did it in the past. Right. You have your whole life and their whole life to change the words that come out of your mouth. You can right. start now. It's right. not too late. It's just uh, not. Yeah. Well, and and thank you because I, I try, I'm trying to do that and not, you know, live on the past because I got a lot of crap in the past I can live in. I'm not, it's, cle I, it's clear I'm to me, not. which is why, which is why I'm like trying to pound into your head. Listen to me. It just doesn't matter. There is no changing that. There's no fucking right. time machines. Right. Who gives a shit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. it, it, you know, and, and people want to dwell because dwelling is similar to should. It's an excuse not to do. You understand? You know, yeah. stay, staying in that, well, I fucked it. Like, it just, it's an excuse not to do. And the fact that you fucking ran this marathon, you need to do the, you did the physical version of it. Now you yeah. need to do the emotional version of it every single day. Sure, I can do that. Um, so... I, I have, you know, a, a lot of ideas and I actually started writing them down because it makes me so crazy. And I can you do me, can you do me a favor? Yes, sir. Can you put it on a dart board and throw a dart or, or, <laughs> or, or just close your eyes and poke a pen to one of them and just do it. I'm going to, um, and I appreciate you when one of the messages you told people to answer, yeah, and I'm like, oh my God, that's exactly what my question was. And, and I'm just going to pick one and I'm going to do it. Pick one. Lana, Lana, just pick one. And then after four months, if you don't like it, you didn't waste time. You learned no. that you didn't like it. And I, then you go to the next thing on the list. Exactly. And I'm sure okay. you know, I'll, I'll learn a lot as I go. So. All right, Lana, thank, thank you, you so much. Everything. Have a great day. Take, Take care. All right, Destin. Live. Two years. That's what I told you last night. I know. I told you. You didn't hear me last night. You. you yeah. Jim. Hey. How are you? I'm good. What's that's a going fucking on? Ep What's going on? Is you have a tremendous setup behind you. I'm very impressed, sir. Yeah, I have. Uh... Bunch of stuff see going it. on. I see it. Where are you from? <laughs> uh, Long Island, Smithtown. Very nice. Yeah. Pleasure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, where can I start? So many amazing people want. on this show yesterday. Tom, today, Maritza. Um, so much. We're building. We're building a little community here, right? We've got like a little. Yeah, team. and I feel like I got a lot of answers. Um, Good. Out that's of, okay out of all the other. So, so why don't we do this? Which makes sense. Why don't we do this? Cause a lot of, to your point, a lot of things have common themes. Let's, let's do this. Cause I think this is really fun. What would you like to happen? Like, what are you doing? And what would you, what, what do you think as of this second, theoretically would make you happy, whether in your soul or professionally, like, how are you thinking about that? That's a good starting point. Yeah. Um, so I do this live interview show, Smithtown Live. I'd like to get 
you know, more involved with that, but then that takes away from my real estate business. So uh, that's, that's my big question is. Well, let's talk about that. That's a great question is you're about to help a lot of people, Jim. So there's Smithtown Live, which is your side hustle, your hobby that probably in the back of your mind, if you can get enough advertisers, enough viewers, you'd love to do full time because you fucking love it. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's the real estate business, which pays the bills and is a real business. Yeah. My so you'd like to have more time for Smithtown Live because the real estate takes up time. And it's obviously the Smithtown Live is the thing you love. Makes sense, right? So mm-hmm. the biggest question I have, and a lot of people live in this scenario, is what, give me a typical day, pre-corona, how many hours on a Monday through Friday or the week, however you want to position it, would you spend on, on real estate? Tell me the truth. Don't bullshit me. How many hours? The, for, the, for the- Real estate. For the week, probably 60. Uh, per day, per day. Per yeah, day. or the, or or the week, however you want to do a typical day. Typical day, eight ten hours. Love you know, that. That's hard. Between, yeah, that's between prospecting and yeah, you know advertising work. and it's webinars and what what takes up time between besides town live and the work. Um, <laughs> my losing track. <laughs> and, and, and signing up for webinars and, and you know I, I get lost really quick you know I can watch two hours of Gary V and then you know I'm like oh crap I gotta go and do that right there you know I, do you, you enjoy learning you enjoy oh, that yeah. process yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm I absorb by go on YouTube in the middle of the night I you know yeah yeah I get it so so with how is Smithtown Live doing is it a podcast is it a YouTube show? What is it? You know what? It's it started out to be um, live live local interviews. They were pre-recorded, and then I put them out as a um, a know, live a live. Yeah, smart. I like that. Okay. Um, and but then that how many just, have you done? Uh, probably a little over 20, 25. That's so now I'm turning them into Zoom calls. I'm calling all the local businesses that belong to the that. chamber and Love saying. That. Hey, Let's go live. I'm doing one tonight. Um, and I'm gonna com- kind of combine into a like a trivia are, show with a pizza. Are restaurant. you I love that? Are you are you doing this as a hobby because you love your local town, or is there a part of you that hopes that all the local businesses kind of find a way to give you five hundred to a thousand a month as a sponsor and this becomes your business? Um, you know, I'm not really looking for sponsorship. It for me it was it was more. I want to do it for my town. And, and, and then that brings and, awareness to you. And it brings for, it, it yeah. amps so, up my so exposure. What, was that something that you'd have heard from me through years? Because I'm a big yeah. fan of this thesis. Great. Yeah, well, yeah, listen, yeah. well, listen, then I'm yeah. thrilled because to your point, I was kind of hoping you would go there like, brother, make 2200. I want the principal, I want the mayor, I want every single fucking business, I want parents, I want the high school coach, like just pay them. Yeah. So now that's been a, that's been a little bit of an obstacle as I go to businesses and, and they're like, they, they always think I'm coming in with a ploy. Don't tell them you're not. Tell them. I, and I do. I go, it's tell just, there's no charge to you. You know, it's so pretty then, hard so, to. Uh, well, good, good news. Then go to the next one. Yeah. You haven't asked every business. You haven't asked every local official. You I, haven't asked every, you just have it. Well, on, or try to convince somebody. Don't convince anybody. Just ask the next person. Jim, one of the biggest reasons a lot of people really struggle with sales is they put so much energy convincing someone instead of realizing, just go to the next person. Okay. No convincing, just jumping to the next opportunity. Yeah. Because let me promise you, when this starts getting going, then the ice cream shop's going to be saying, shit, why did the tire store and the florist and the therapist get this and I didn't I got to call back that guy what's his name again James Johnny you know what I mean yeah Yeah. got it yeah so um what was the second so how do so how do you parlay the the real estate and the Smithtown live together I know like you threw up your little text for wine yesterday but I'm I'm trying to keep them separate I think separate's gonna work I think you post them on you post them on YouTube, you post, you put the show everywhere. Yeah. That that's going to index on search and inevitably you're going to make one video that people don't understand. It's about 800 videos that do nothing for you. And then one video with a dentist that for some reason populates to the top of Google search, right? 
Okay. And all of a sudden, when people are thinking about this town to move to it, they see this video of you. They real, you know, you you end it with, you know, this is Jim Hayden, and you know, I'm a real estate agent in this wonderful town, and you've been listening to Smithtown Live, and they're like, wait a minute, he's a real estate agent, and away you go. That's why I like principals and superintendents and teachers because school districts are a big part of people deciding. So if they, if if you're the one who interviewed all the teachers and all the coaches and all the principals, you've got a real shot of showing up somewhere on their search and their homework, which then leads to trust, which then leads to you being their real estate agent. Okay. Got it? Okay. Yeah. That's what you got to do. Can I, uh, another question is- Real quick. Yeah. I get, go ahead. So the, this whole Corona thing, like, you know, everybody's, how do I motivate other agents around me and, and myself? You know, I just came- Ah, uh, there you go. And Action. myself, you know, Action. I just came from, um, you know, I took a couple of months off. My brother passed away. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. Um, now I'm back. And then all of a sudden this Corona thing happened. Brother, honestly, Jim, you, you know what you and I have the pl pleasure of? We've lived life a little bit, right? We're not 20, yep. right? You've lived life. You know that this is part of the game, unfortunately. I mean, that is, listen, I'm talking like a big shot. I don't know. It, it might take me years to recover from a sibling's death. Like, I, I can't even, like, I can't even, like, project that pain. Um, a, don't beat yourself up if you're not motivated yet because maybe you're not done, you know, mourning, right? Yeah. Uh, the, the corona thing is the corona thing. Like, guess what? It's better than the Black Plague. Guess what? It's better than World War II. So, like, you know, like that just you, that's just something that happens. This is a time to be grateful for your health and the other people that you love. Be grateful for the opportunity. And I would just go ham on content creation, but not try to convince. Just just there's plenty of teachers right now willing to talk about how they're getting through Corona, how they like the town, their career. Everybody wants a little bit. Most people want a little bit of fame. And so if you yeah. ask to have them on the show, you'll do quite well. Just pile into your passion, which is this, you know, using Smithtown to build up the real estate thing. It will work. You just have to put out the content. Brother, I put out fucking years of wine yeah, content. Yeah, I know. I've been watching you. My, I mean, my brother uh, knew you from way, way back in the day. So okay. I'm actually going to send you his book. He just finished Please. writing his book before he passed away. Please, please do that. Right send an email to, I love that. I, I'd like to honor him by checking out that book. So Gary yeah. at VaynerMedia, uh, good luck, Jim. Put out the content. Don't convince, just do. Okay, thank you. Thank you, brother. Take care. All right, Dustin, let's keep it going. A lot of emotions here on uh, Tea with Gary V this day. Okay, the wellness habit, thank you. Thank you so much for signing up. Be by the cloud guy. Go on, Gary. What's good, Robert? Hey, how's it going? How's it going? Sorry I'm uh, driving to work right now, but I've been listening to you all morning. Beautiful, bro. Just keep your eyes on the road. You talk. I'll listen. All right. All right. All right. All right. Uh, so, uh, I mean, I guess uh, I know you're on the road here, so I'm, uh, I'm going to try to keep it going. Um, I know my heart's already beating fast, man. I never did nothing like this. Um, From my question, this is already killing me because I don't do well with uh, public view. Um. And it's kind of, so I guess it's making it easier for me to keep my eyes on the road and not make eye contact. With even you. better, even stuttering. better. Good. Yeah, so I'm not stuttering and saying anything stupid. Um, there is no stupid. First... Robert, Robert, there is no stupid, bro. There's just the shit that's on your mind. I, I really wish people realized that. There is no stupid. There's no smart or stupid question on some real shit. There's just Robert living his fucking life and has a random thought. Get that fucking stupid, get that thought out of your, like, let me cut that shit out of your mind right now forever. There is no fucking stupid. There's just you. There's just me. There's just Dustin. There's just Jim. Like, fuck that shit. Who? Who gets to say something stupid? Fuck that. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're absolutely right. Um, and I know one of the first things you're probably going to tell me is that I'm, I'm too young to worry about this shit. But one of the things I struggle with most right now, man, and I'm 27 years old. Um, I got three beautiful kids and a beautiful wife. And I struggle with trying to make life in my eyes worthy for them and for my children in the future. I love that. So I first of all, let me give you some good news. The fact that you even care about that means that you're going to make it worthy. I think Robert might be going through a patch driving. Damn. Um, I think he's back. 
Robert. Yep, I'm here. So Robert, the fact that you even care about that means that you're gonna make it worthy. Bro, do not make this about anything other than giving love with the proper intent. It's as simple as that. Like, like you're, you're gonna make it worthy by actually caring to make it worthy and loving. The end. It's not gonna be worthy because of stuff. It's not gonna be worthy because of professional accomplishment. It's gonna be worthy because you fucking loved. Right, right, you're absolutely right. Like what? You're gonna like worthy because you got a bigger house? Worthy because you put an extra zero in the bank account? What's worthy? Worthy is about you loving those fuckers and putting self-esteem in them. Yeah, I just want them to know that there's something more to them what I can offer them as far as what I have to offer. I want them to know that the world is theirs. Then they can, just they can take it back and do whatever they want. Robert, just pump that shit into their head. Pump it. Pump it. 24 seven love opportunity you can. Bro, people don't look at their parents based on their professional or financial accomplishments. They look at them based on what they put in their fucking dome. 100%. I know, bro. Right. I, meet, I meet people all the time that have gone on to have happy, successful lives that came from parents that had crazy humble beginnings because their parents made them believe. And it wasn't, and, and kids aren't gonna come at their parents and like, well, why didn't you? And you're gonna say, here were my circumstances. Here's what happened. You keep it real as fuck, but you tell them, but that was my circumstances. Your circumstances, you got me and I'm gonna fucking take you to the top mentally. Right, right. See, and that's the kind of person I am too. I'm always, I've always been uh, raised that way. I mean, for, you know, a, a little differently. You know, my dad wasn't very, uh, he wasn't a person for words. He was very physical with me. Um, yep. So for somebody like that, I grew up, it kind of forced me into this kind of a show. So yep. another part of my question was, I, always, I was always somewhat of a class clown, you know what I mean? I was yep. that kid, I was that performer. But now yep. as I'm older and uh, now we're in this world of producing content, <clears throat> excuse me, and putting stuff on social media, I always find myself at that block, like where I can't do it because I feel that rain of judgment just just yep. flashing down on me like you're not funny you're not this you can't do yep. that you're not funny enough you don't look good look at this guy with the scruffy beard and the mustache i like the scruff one. You know, I, I like it I, old, I can barely grow a beard <laughs> yo bro first of all the scruff looks good you're i'm weirdly attracted <laughs> to you so you're be plenty beautiful don't worry about that listen to me <laughs> your dad your aunt nobody gets to decide besides the market you need to get on tiktok make some funny shit try your best the market gets to decide. There is no human that gets to decide. The market, aka the world. Get up, listen right. to me. Get crazy about TikTok. TikTok is the place for funny. TikTok's a safe place right now. It's very nice because it's That's early. Just Twitter was nice at first. Instagram was nice at first. That's how they all work. Facebook mm -hmm. was like, it's it's nice right now, and it's about funny. You need to go in there and try, bro. You're 27, bro. You're a fucking kid, bro. You're a fucking kid, bro. I know you're, you're gonna 27. say that. <laughs> you know me then. Like you, cause yep. it's the truth, bro. For a while. Yeah. You're, it's the truth, you're a fucking kid. Love your children, make them feel the opposite of what your dad made you feel. They'll learn that that was your story and they're gonna be grateful for what you did for them. And then that's one chapter. And then on the other side, go make funny shit. And when your friend or your uncle or somebody says, what the fuck are you wasting your time for? You look them dead in the face and you tell them, you worry about you. You worry about you, fuck you. You worry about you. Right, Word. Like every time yeah. somebody's come at me hard growing up or in life, or like, why are you doing this? I go right at them like a fucking gangster. I'm like, why are you drinking at night when nobody's paying attention? You know, like, come at them. Listen, every, you know what I mean? Fuck them. Go into a cocoon. You've heard me say that if you know who I am. Get quiet. Yeah. Love your kids. Make them feel they can do anything in the world. But don't be delusional. Don't tell them they can dunk if they're only gonna be five seven. You know what I mean? You know? <laughs> yeah, no, that should be tall. They're, I'm six two, so I'm pretty sure. I'm, <laughs> I'm going macro, bro. Not literally though. But nonetheless, <laughs> listen to me. Listen to me. Build self esteem in them, which is unfortunately not what you were fortunate in getting. And then go make funny shit on TikTok. That is the fucking prescription that I'm giving you, Robert. All uh, right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I actually do. I, I have a TikTok account, and I made. A couple go of hard. few videos. I'm proud of you. Let's go. Those are all the most organic views, man. I've made some weird 
dumb videos, and I'm like, how do I get over 600 views on that? But on this, I didn't get anything. It's, it's don't kinda... think, listen to me, don't think for six months. No thinking, no thinking, no valuing how many views, how many followers, no numbers, no thinking. Make, 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 make. Every little awesome creative thing running through your beautiful brain, make, make, make. Got it? Okay, got it. All right, take care of yourself. Peace, Gary. Thank you, man. Peace. Thank you. Got you. All right, get into a little bit of roll here. Now I'm feeling it. Uh, up next, we're going to have Celeste. Celeste. I love it. All right. All right, Shen. Shen's a loon. You got it. You asked me, I'm your 16th fucking follower. Big ups to Costa Rica. Celeste. Hey, what's up? <laughs> How are things? Good. I, um... I'm just, I work out of my home, so everything's kind of the same inside. It just feels really weird and ominous outside. outside yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I just wanted to uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to be on here and for everything that you're doing and how many people you help just daily. Um, so, so I own a small business I have for five years. Um, and so I know w without risking, um, I guess, seeming insensitive um, with everything that's going on, um, my... I guess what I would want to know from like your perspective is like, what is the positive, like what is the most positive thing that's going to come out of this? Cause like, I, you know, I know for me, you know, I, I, I definitely feel impacted. Um, my business feels impacted and it's a little bit uncertain and a little scary. Um, you know, moving forward, it's, that's how I pay my bills. And, you know, it's been a really like, rough five years with, you know, like the, this trough of sorrow with owning your own business. And, um, so I, I'm, but I'm, I'm finding like a lot of like inspiration in, um, trying to like be of service in any way, like, because I don't have kids that aren't in daycare. I don't have kids that I have to homeschool. Like I'm not that, like I'm impacted obviously, but I'm not like suffering. And so I'm, I see it as like an opportunity to like reevaluate less, real quick. Real quick, so you don't put guilt on you, because I appreciate the energy you're coming with. Not like a like a shocking amount of people aren't. Right. An extraordinary amount of people are loving this vacation because they're right. getting paid. Yeah. <laughs> An extraordinary amount of people don't have responsibilities. An extraordinary amount of people's businesses are thriving because they sell food on the internet and people are buying more. So, yeah. a a don't worry about don't beat yourself up for worrying about you and potentially even seeing opportunity that's okay you're supposed to worry about you right and you can have compassion and sympathy and empathy for others i see nothing but opportunity for four hours and then i go on for 15 minutes with my admin and we send a bunch of masks to hospitals because right. i can afford it and if you can't that's also fine you just saying prayers and calling people and checking in. You going to your phone right now and texting five people that used to be friends or acquaintances of yours that you haven't talked to in four years and just saying, hey, taking advantage of this time to like see how you're doing and just sending a little love and showing that you care, that's powerful. So don't beat yourself up, A. Let's start there. Okay. Right. okay? And I, I mean and it's It's tough because it's like I do, you know, when you do something that is not for like just the benefit of you or your business or whatever, like, um, you know, you do feel good. So, um, you know, it's hard, it's hard to exactly what you're saying, not feel guilt in a lot of ways that you're not like, you know, super. Impacted. I, I listened to the things I was saying and I saved money, which allowed me to do nice things like I'm doing right now for hospitals and workers yeah. and different things and employees and all the things I'm doing. Other people either were silly and bought dumb shit or just never went to place where they had too much college debt or something horrible happened. They didn't save. And so what, what, but they want to do something good. They can do positive things. I'm telling you, texting old friends and saying hello and thinking about you and caring about you is a great deed. And putting out good karma into the universe is a great deed. So everybody can do stuff. So we've, we've, we put that on the side. What can I help you with for you? So thanks. Um, so I guess like I, having said all that and kind of realizing that there is a lot of opportunity despite like the crisis, um, that everyone's kind of facing is like, uh, so f for me, like I've noticed, um, so I'm a small business and I, I, um, you know, I, I'm very supportive of other, my, like my friends and just people that I know that are customers of mine that also have small businesses. Like I've been encouraging, um, like people to, go and tag their small business or one that they love or their friends like on my page. The, and like I've been you'll, doing. You'll appreciate this. Guilting 
slash inspiring is not something that's going to do overwhelmingly well. Right. You know, let, uh, by the way, that's not to discourage you because you're doing a wonderful act. I just want to give you the mindset of humans right now. Like I'm watching all these people like support your small business. And then I, I'm watching and reading and paying attention and people are like, that's cool, but I don't want to fucking buy, you know, a, a pizza right now. I'm fucking scared shitless about right. like my business, my job. You know what I mean? Like, so just yeah. keep that in mind. It's almost like, you know, just keep that in mind. So, and that's like the thin line that I'm, I'm walking. So my, my business is like, I design and I um, sell women's athletic, like athleisure apparel. And um, so I just re like, I rebranded at the end of last year and I used to just be like a regular e-com store. And so now I do limited edition uh, releases. So the, you know, the concept, it allows me to be able to design and be. Let me ask you a question. Can you afford to do a drop where you give the profits to you know, uh, nurses and, and doctors. Um, I don't think I can afford to do some of it. Yeah. 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 I would, I would, I would design something right now that incorporates like maybe, you know, like the, the, I guess the red cross, you know, like the, you know, like, like incorporates that whole movement. I bet you that could be some sort of viral moment and could really build awareness for you. You survive your, your overhead and rent and all that. You feel amazing because you've given a, a, a donation to your local hospital, right? Because even if it's a five hundred dollars, you buy five hundred dollars worth of masks and you donate. Giving is what you can afford to give. I used to give nine dollars, and now I don't. I give more. You know, like you know, it yeah. you know it changes. Um, and it's also a thing that can build brand for you because people appreciative that you're stepping up, which then may lead to business when we get out of here. So that might be a model to think about, especially if you made the athleisure design as a pre-sale limited edition drop that incorporated what's going on right now. Maybe a mask set, right. maybe that, you know, you see where I'm going? Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. That's like such a dope idea. And and that's like kind of what I was looking for, something to like, be, you know, get behind without it being insensitive. Well, so that's, or like, that's, or- that, that's what T with Gary Vee is fucking all about. <laughs> it's fucking awesome. <laughs> it's you know it, it's it's how I live. I live in the in the macro, the clouds, the mindset, and then in the dirt, right? The tactics. I right. and I play back and forth. Some of this stuff, as you've been watching, is for people here. Uh, for you right now, I'm super pumped because that's a real tactic that's gonna fucking work, and and that's gonna work. And God forbid, AK God willing, somebody in news is gonna see that local news thing and have you on a Zoom and talk about why you did it. Like, there's something really big on this idea. I hope you do it ASAP. Fuck yeah, thank you so much. That's so dope. Welcome, I appreciate Talk it. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks. All right, Dustin. Showing my chops here, motherfucker. <laughs> uh, we have uh, Christina coming up next. Hi, yeah. Christina. Hi. How are you? Good. There we go. Okay, I wanted to make sure I had it set up right. <laughs> you have it set up right. What's good? So, hey, so first I want to just um, give a just give big love to people out there that are going through a tough time right now. Um, I have two people very special in my life that are going through some different things. My brother is a captain in the army who just retired. His ceremony has been canceled naturally. Um, also my best friend, Kristen down in South Florida, lost her dad at the beginning of the month, had to cancel the celebration of life ceremony. I was actually supposed to fly and I got sick myself. Couldn't go. So I, I, my heart beats for everybody that is um, dealing with things like that. I feel very fortunate that we, knock on wood, haven't had anything tragic like that happen. Um, my high schooler is not a senior, but what's kind of cool is the things I've been seeing from seniors, they're taking it well. You know, they're having fun with it and just really making the best of it. That's what you gotta 100%. do. 100%. I mean, listen, it's devastating to lose your prom and your graduation, but this is a real pandemic. I mean, we're going to start seeing 2,000 people, 3,000 people a day dying. And we need to have perspective, like, and we need to innovate. Like, I yeah. can't wait to see the first, you know, high school do an entire prom on Zoom. Like, yeah. there's so much fun shit you can do. So innovation comes from adversity. And I think we'll see a lot of cool shit, Christina. Couldn't agree more. What's cooking? What can I help you with? So, so my question to you was, um, how do you have any advice on balance? I mean, I've heard you talk about it before. Um, I struggle with it personally. I, I don't know if you can see, hold on, let me see. There's my cat. So cute. So you cute. guys might know that my cat is an internet cat on Instagram. Um, I do struggle though with keeping up with everything that 
you know, that entails keeping engaged with the fans and the emails back and forth. With can I, can I give you, can I, can I give you a quick prescription that sure. you're going to love? Yes. Christina, it, you are keeping up with it. You're just judging yourself. I am, but I feel like, because I always feel like I can do more. I feel like I'm falling mm -hmm. short. I don't, I feel like. Because you're judging yourself. Enough. <laughs> you're, ju you're judging yourself. But that's my you're middle name. I judge myself all the time. I'm very self-conscious. Well, well, I have great news. It's the number one fucking thing we have to figure out because yeah. it, it's poison. Yeah. And it's it is fun. something I struggle with heavily. And I've grown over the years. I've learned to shake a lot off my shoulders. Have, and I, I can even feel it in your energy. And that makes me happy. I just want yep. to cut more of that cancer out of your body. I'm being dead serious with you. Like what? Uh -huh. Eight, what like it's a never ending game. So you replied to 18 people on average in the past. And now you got inspired right. to TKRB. Now you're doing 33. Well, why not 47? You know, you're posting yeah. two times a day on TikTok. You know, all of a sudden you go to, you know, seven and why not eight? Like yeah. you have to understand judgment's a fucking forever game. It's a bad yeah. game. Yeah, I guess it's it's hard sometimes to deal with the guilt from fans who don't understand, you know, that what we do is just so, so consuming. And I mean, I when this all first started, when when she went viral and became famous, I was up till three, four o'clock in the morning. I've heard you tell Christina, that before Christina, too. <laughs> Christina, I have, I have five to 15,000 DMs and texts a day. Oh, sure. yeah. In there, in there, four people, write things like, this is my last text before I take my life. If you do not help me, Gary, yeah. I will take my life. Do you understand what level of potential guilt yeah, I have I on a daily basis? I do. I, and, and what you have to do is put that into a place of like, you're just a human being. Yeah. I'm trying the best I can. Yep. You're trying the best you can. First of all, it's fucking famous cat life. Like we're so lucky. Like let's let's let's. And that take sounds it. so weird. That sounds such a weird. Term. It doesn't. No, it doesn't sound weird. In the same way that if a senior went on right now with me and was yeah. crying that they couldn't do their prom, and it, that's their life. That's their life. And your yeah. life is that. So I don't judge that. But you have to stop judging yourself. You're doing the best you can. Yeah, and I mean, I have said that. I've told my husband that before. There's only so much I can do. The and end. You brought yeah. up that example. Period. Period. Yeah. Period. And every time you beat yourself up, say, oh my God, Gary V let six people kill themselves today. And I mean that. <laughs> no, I've and, seen and, that. And, and, you know, yeah. and, and listen, my hope and dream is that 99.9999% of them are, are, are writing, you know, half are just silly kids writing. That's right. Yeah. Yes. But, but do I believe that, that it has happened? Yes, I do believe it. It's and do, does it break my fucking soul? Yes, it does. But yeah. what am I going to do? Like, I'm not a fucking robot. You're a I fucking know. human being. I'm the same I, way. My heart. I, I got my own shit. No, I, I, I got my own shit. I got my own shit. Right. I got You're my right. own shit. You're right. And that's at the end of the day what I have to tell myself. I know that I'm trying the best that I can. It's not that I don't want to because my Christina. heart is so big I want to. I just don't have the time. Like I only have some Christina. Ideas. Christina, and if you want to spend three hours and watch a fucking Netflix show and drink a bottle of wine with your husband, you can do that too. You need stop. To really yeah. Stop judging yourself, please. Yeah. I'm working on it. I've come a long way because boy, it used to eat me up a lot more. More, more. Use yeah. this serendipity. You know, if there wasn't Corona, we're, I'm not doing tea with Gary Vee. Yeah. There's a million people trying to get on this on this yeah. show. You got on, like more. I'm loving it. Quick, yeah. Real quick though, how many TikToks are you making with the cat? Um, I I think I have a little over almost 400. 400 posts. Love you. 400 posts, right? 400 Love TikToks. It. Yes. So we love TikTok. Super proud of you. TikTok proud is of you. so fun. So we have over a million followers now on three different platforms, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. What I'm working on, I don't know um, how much of my form you saw. So my husband's not working. I didn't see it. He's in a blue collar trade, okay? Um, <clears throat> last Tuesday, we got um, orders to shut down, shelter it place in place. And so he's been home. So I was like, man, you know, he's a majority income earner. Believe it or not, I don't make a million dollars a year like everyone thinks. Um, and so we're having to go back to the drawing board, which is something I've done a lot in my life. Cause I'm going to circle back to that in a second and tell you how I started flipping in 1997. Um, oh my God, I can't wait to tell you that. Okay. So anyway, so he is home and he makes a considerable amount of money, way more than I can get with a, the business government grant that just came out or unemployment I get or anything it. like that. I get it. Way, I'm like way more. So <laughs> I, we're going, we're deaf. We have a savings account. That's great. We work really hard to build that up. Um, I mean, I, there's people out there that can't pay their next mortgage or water bill. So I'm not complaining at all. Um, no, but but I, again, it goes back to it being your real life. Like right. 
you know, there's somebody watching right now and being like, fuck, that house looks beautiful. Look at that paint. Like, <laughs> but but the reality is you worked your fucking face off. He right. also worked his face yeah. off for it. Yeah, like, a, lot of, like, a lot of the time, the more you make, the more you have, the higher your bills are. So we, we won't well, cover that's, the bills with what we're able to get. The bills is the key though. Yeah. Like that, that's something that I have passion for. This yeah. is when you and him have to sit down and really look at the bills yeah. and really debate bills. You have to debate yeah. bills. Like, you know, like you got a lot of, like people buy stuff. Like, yeah. by the way, you can flip, you can flip half your house. You probably yeah. don't, every human being, whether they have one little fucking two side, two paintings in their house or a lot of stuff in their house, every human being hates half the stuff that's in their house already now anyway. Yeah, that, I mean, that, and that's how I started flipping. But my idea was, I was going to tell you, and I'm going to go back to the flipping, is that um, I've had to think, what can I have him do here? I mean, he's here. We have nothing but time. I just told you I have a million, over a million followers on three different platforms for Venus. I have grossly neglected her YouTube channel now for four years. <laughs> it's terrible. Yeah. I'm very embarrassed. No, no. That. But Don't be embarrassed. I, again, Don't be embarrassed. No time. It, I only no, have so much time. I have kids. No. So. What? You have children, yep. you fucking have a life, yep. and you built up over a million followers on three different platforms. Every single person that's watching right now is like, Jesus Christ, if I had 10,000 followers, I'd rip my yep. arm off. You're crushing it, Christine. And I co-run, oh, I love that crushing, and I have your book you signed, by the way. Um, I, yeah, I co-run the business with him, too. So, I mean, I'm just, I'm wearing so many different hats, and it's just stretched so thin that you I can't are, get so far. So can the I, idea can was, I, can I, go ahead. you're home now. You're home now, you have nothing but time. We have the last Let's see the fucking iPad, YouTube. phone, whatever. Yes, I'm going to assign him to the YouTube channel. He's game for it. And I, I want to revive that channel and hope that not only can we supplement the income he's not making right now and hopefully not have to drain our savings, but when everything goes back to normal, we'll be in a better position than we were before because that yes. will be coming. And, and by the way, do you know that Facebook is like Facebook ad revenue is exploding. So I would also very much focus on Facebook as well. And there's, I'm in the beta of it. There's a new Facebook live ad product coming. There's yeah. just always going to be opportunities. Yeah. You just have to keep looking. And, you know, so it's going back to the flipping. What about this, Christina? What about direct messaging every single cat brand on earth, cat food, cat toys, oh, yeah. like all of them? I definitely could. That's one thing I've been blessed again because Venus is so unique looking. I haven't had a lot of trouble. Most of the the um, sponsored posts I do, they're incoming. I don't really look for much, Stick but with I me. could. But here's the thing. Here's the here's the thing though. Again, not having I only have to I have to try to find balance. I could make a whole lot more money right now. In fact, I probably could be a millionaire if I wanted to cart my cat all over the place. If I wanted to do commercials and movies and. Uh, I music video I got it. turned down last year and stuff, but I, first of all, I have my limits with her. Then I have my limits with family because I don't want to take too much time away from them. That Good. is what's more important to me, honestly, than making a million dollars with my cat. Good. So, Listen to me. Everything I've just heard, I'm so not fucking worried about you. Like your, your yeah, mindset yeah, is so on point. Like you'll sell this fucking home and live in a different home if you have to, before yeah. you compromise the things that are important to you. Listen to me. Yeah. Stop beating stop beating yourself up. You're a We're fucking wonder woman. From humble Christina, Christina, stop beating yourself up. You're a fucking superhero. <laughs> Thanks. Period. Yeah. Please. I always Every, find a way. Everybody can do more and yeah. everybody can do less. Just well, do you. And this is why I wanted to mention the flipping. I don't know how much time I have, but so last, in, last seconds. Okay, 1997, quick. Um, I had a, my first son in 1997. He got very sick with RSV. He was in the hospital a couple times. I had to stop working my day job. So um, I have been an avid garage sale junkie like you forever, right? So I used to buy a lot of stuff for my son when he was born from garage sales. So I went out garage sailing, hit a garage sale. It was multifamily, had a bunch of girl clothes. I only have boys. I have three boys now, never had the girl. <laughs> but something hit me that day that I was buying clothes off of eBay. And this is like 1997, right? Why can't I sell? So I bought everything they had for a dollar a piece. Jim Barry, Ralph Lauren, Tommy Hilfiger, you know, Gap, all the stuff that was popular. Rich back areas. Then. I snatched it all up, put it all on eBay. Um, I got a little system going where, you know, I mean, and back then we're talking regular camera, developing the film. I remember. Take out. Oh, my God. It was yes. the worst. I Ready? remember. Ready? Image to posting. Out. This is what. Christina, this is why I want to punch all these kids in the face. They're like, ah, oh, it's hard. I'm like, this hard. is all you need this, now, you, right here. This is a fucking, this is no I know, I know, fucking, I know. It's it's so easy now. It makes me crazy. Like it used to take me an hour. AJ, AJ, you said that. 
And then what then digital camera, AJ had to take the fucking disc out, put yeah. it in a fucking computer. It was a fucking yeah. mess. And even then, I, but that was before I didn't even have a phone, no digital camera, nothing. It was all done in film in 97 and it was all dial up and uh, you had to copy the HTML and just change the little description. Oh yeah, but you know what though? I'm gonna tell you though, I made between one and $2,000 a month back in 1997, more than replaced the job that I left and I was home with my kid. And so, and I didn't realize I was an entrepreneur till then. That was my Christina, moment. Christina, you may be the least, you might be the person I'm least worried about on earth. I don't even wanna, I don't even wanna <laughs> talk you. to you anymore. I'm moving lot. on. I love you. Go. Thank you. Love you too. See ya. Bye-bye. Love it. So good. All right, let's see what everybody's doing here. Wine and traveling loves Christina as much as I did. Um, there we go, Scotty. It's, uh, Celeste, let's get some, let's follow Celeste who's just on right now. Boom. Uh, Tanya, come on next. All right, <clears throat> please. Uh, everybody who's watching right now, please take a photo of this talk with Tanya and share it on Twitter with a link to Facebook, which is in my Twitter profile, and I will retweet and follow a bunch of you. Tanya, how are you? Hi, Gary. Um, I'm freaking out that I'm even talking to you right now. I'm not even gonna lie. <laughs> well, I'm glad we're here. Um, so I'm a social media influencer slash blogger, whatever you want to call it. I've been doing this before it was even a thing. Um, and obviously this pandemic has hit everyone in so many different ways, um, which is kind of earth shattering for a lot of us. Um, I just want to know, what do you think this pandemic is going to do to social media marketing for businesses and people like me? Explode it because most businesses now realize they have to become digital and sell through the internet. Right. I've seen now, a lot of- now, now, there's also a looming potential recession. So right. brand, brand, brand deals may get split in half. And, and this is why I've been yelling and screaming, as you know, about like, A, save your money. You know, <laughs> yeah. you know like B, B, create other opportunities besides just brand deals. Just being an influencer is one dimensional. You got to round that out with product, services, business, things of that nature. So in the macro, Tanya, great, because more people are going to look at digital and ways to win in digital. In the micro, specifically for influencers, there could be a drying up season for brand deals, which a lot of people rely on. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of us, you know, I said in my form that I sent over that I'm at the point now in my career where brands just come to me and it's almost like one of those things you just get used to and you take, take it, it for from granted. granted, not on purpose. You know, you just, it just becomes your life. Brand. It's your norm. It's what you think. Exactly. And then it kind of brought out the hustle in me again to where creating organic content because I have all this time now and reaching out to brands and pitching them. And where are you, where are you on, where are you on TikTok? I just started TikTok. <laughs> Honey, this is a big deal. This is why I'm so pumped. You have to win TikTok. It's gonna be the next platform. You're gonna lose any, like you have to go hard. You have to go back to straight humility. Nobody quote unquote knows you and fucking right. go hard. Post on TikTok, hit the share, put in your Instagram story, build that back up so your audience knows you're there. Make one main feed and be like, I'm on fucking TikTok, I'm going hard. Like you need to go. <laughs> I know, I've been trying to go on TikTok. It's definitely a different platform and I feel like- But you could still do you. You you could still be you. And Instagram was a different platform to the people that were winning on Facebook pages. And Facebook pages was a different platform. It's always a different platform. Right. And the, and the way that you were like laughing at everybody for not understanding Instagram is how they're laughing at you for not understanding TikTok. You know, like. <laughs> oh gosh, it's so true. <laughs> you, have to, you have to go. And by the way, it's not, it's kids for 40 seconds. It's already much older than it was even six months ago or a year ago. I, I don't dance. I don't do that shit. I put out my content. Put out your content. Yeah, that's true. I just need to hustle on there. I just need to, you need to get fucking into work. Here. Yeah. You need to fucking um, get, you, you, you've got to get out of that entitled mindset because you had won in a prior game to your point where shit came easy. Right. And you need to go back to early you. Into hustle. Yeah, I mean, it's brought out so many different aspects of that hustle mode. And it's, it's, it's good. It's inspired in a good way because I feel like if I don't say something positive out of what's going on, I mean, Do you well, understand how much positive there's going to be? Yeah. Stop watching the news and reading Facebook. Like this is unlimited positivity for most people. Reconnecting with old friends, right. you know, spending more time with family, getting back to you know, you're going to tighten up now. 
It's kind of like working out, you know, you know, all the all the brands coming to you let you get a little flabby. Now you're going to get back and fucking get it right. <laughs> that's a good way. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, is, and by the way, it's unlikely that you would have taken TikTok seriously if this if nothing had happened. Oh, 100%. And then in three and a half like, years, I would have pushed it to the side. And when Instagram organic reach collapses in three and a half years and goes to zero, like Facebook pages, you'll stop getting deals because you can't reach anybody. Right. And then it's all happening on TikTok, and you would have been like, uh oh. I know. No, that's true. I didn't even think of that, about that. All my friends are on TikTok and killing it. They're like, you need to get on it. And I'm like, I'm just uncomfortable. But I feel like the best things come out of being uncomfortable in certain situations like this. Get out of high school mindset and just make. Yeah. I'm comfortable okay. at what, what? You know what the fuck you're doing? Make a right. fucking, in, make, an, in, make a TikTok that looks exactly like you would do on Instagram, but then learn TikTok, the little sticker, the little colors, like play. Right. Spend, to, are you spending time consuming TikTok? Do you have a feel of the vibe or not yet? Yeah, I'm consuming yeah. it. I think I'm consuming yeah. it more, way, more than I am producing. Um, Good, but I'm just trying not, to get inspired and think of other ideas and- Stop and, overthinking it. Yeah. It's not it's not some new cooler club and you were like the cool chick at this one club and now there's a new club. It's not a <laughs> it's not that. It's just not. You understand? Oh, uh, that's how it, that's how it feels sometimes. I mean No shit. That's why I'm telling you it's not. I get into it a little bit because I have a seventh month old and um I think baby content just does good in general. People people love babies and I've been trying to put him into it. So <laughs> but. listen to me, babies, advice, random shit, get inspired and do something dorky, just fucking live. But you yeah. better start fucking making for TikTok now. All right. I'm going to fucking right. do it. <laughs> Good. Bye, Tony. Bye, Gary. Take care. All right. Bobby Blackjack. My man, Bobby Blackjack. Good news, bro. I'm your 388th follower. Um, also, uh, a guaranteed, we're going to do a guaranteed follow on Twitter blitz right now. If you sign up for Wine Text, my dad's platform, winetext.com right now, and post the screen of you joining, I will follow you. Let's keep going. Dean. Hey, Gary, how you doing? I'm doing super well, bro. How are you? You know what? I'm doing quite peachy. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> I can appreciate I help you, with? you uh, taking the time. How hey, do you do so it? Real quick, so I guess we'll jump into it. So my question for you was, um, at what point, or maybe you never do it, do you start divesting or diverging from your brand, yourself, your persona, and start focusing on content for your businesses? So something that I've noticed is that people do better in the social media marketing realm, content delivery, than businesses talking. Uh, they do better in engagement in be yeah. building audiences. Don't forget it's social media. It's peer to peer yeah. people. Uh, but they don't necessarily do better in business results. Okay. So for example, being very effective on LinkedIn as a B2B, uh, business right now, you can annihilate revenue in comparison to an influencer who has 4 million followers. So I would, I, I better in the metrics that we all see likes, followers, engagement, but not better in actual business results if you look under the hood. Okay. okay. Because brand, brands that put out organic content jabs, who then come in with a sales pitch, a right hook, if they do it extremely well, crush in business results. Um, a lot of people are really good at jabbing and are bad at right hooks. A lot of people are over right hooky. And, you know, so... You yeah. know, a lot of people have a lot of followers because they're attractive, because they're funny, because, you know, but doesn't really lead to business results, right? So there's a little bit of that dynamic, Dean, to keep in mind. Okay. Yeah, because I've been, so I originally, I, so I have a full-time job uh, in sales and then I have my own personal brand um, basically built up just around high performance and healthy living and different just motivational tips, right? I'm not trying to be a life coach or anything like that. Just, I got it. You know, you're, you're enjoying it. Yeah, I just, you know. And do you hope? And, and, being and, a mentor, and, is, right? and and is there is there a and then there's the and if this leads to people being aware of me of what I do professionally, that's a nice thing. Yeah, exactly. Do you in your personal brand profile do you link to something that shows your professional part of your life? So that's the thing. So I have a website that takes you to my own personal, and then it shows some like I have a podcast and I'm starting, and I have you know takes you to that. 
But then what's I your biggest other, profile? Huh? What's your biggest profile? Your personal brand? What's that? Uh, so that's DeanStavro.com and on Facebook. What about on social? Uh, um, so is it Facebook yeah, your number fa- one place? Yeah, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. Uh, I'm what's your what's your what's, what, what's your Instagram name? Uh, Dean Stavro. S T A V R O U. Is it at real Dean Stavro? Yeah, that's it. Okay, so you know, let's see. I am Instagram right now. I left Twitter. I'm sorry. Excuse me. I was looking at I was looking at Twitter. Yeah, I'm on there too. So I'm on all the platforms. And so on, I have, Insta- on Instagram, it's Dean Starbo, right? Yeah, yeah. Can we give it one second? I just want to see something. And then it goes to your website, the link, and that goes here. Sign up for a free newsletter. And what do you want to have happen with the free newsletter? So I was doing, I was going to do a newsletter and I'm, I'm, I'm actually revising it right now. I'm going to start a podcast instead an interview Understood. style podcast to talk. And about. what, and, and what's the long-term hope on that? Do you hope to be hired to consult businesses? So, yeah. So my other businesses, so the other, the other businesses that I have, so I, I work for a company and I do sales consulting, technical sales consulting for large scale companies. And then at the same time, in a previous life and something I'm restarting is, is small business um, technology consulting, helping businesses make sense of that. We also, me, me and my wife, we let started- Let me stay right there. I apologize. Oh, give me, finish that thought. Go ahead. We also started a, a, a fast casual brand that we were launching here in Nashville. That's and cool. now this happens. So we're kind of pivoting into delivery. But anyway, Makes so we sense. have all this stuff going on. And is it better uh, than I number, can number, for me or for the business? Yes, you. And number two is the key. I want you to put out all your best advice for free about what small businesses should be thinking about from a tech standpoint. Literally, literally all your best advice, literally. Make it feel like, hey, hey, Rick, hey, Sasha, hey, Susan, I'm going to put out content that allows you not to hire me. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, if you go from that lens, I'm going to put out such good content, so detailed in video form that people are not going to hire me you will be stunned by how many people hire you. Yeah, okay. Got it? Yeah, I appreciate it. You got it, bro. That, that is the breakthrough. That's where nobody gets it. Yeah. That's what I do. Watch okay. what I do, not what I say. I'm giving out my best fucking advice for free. Yep. Yes, you are. And VaynerMedia is the biggest, fastest growing agency in marketing. You know what I mean? That's true. So that, got it? Got it. All right, brother. Talk to Thanks, you soon. Dean got it. I can tell Dean got it. I love that. He fucking did get it. All right, let's see who else is in here. Signed up for Wine Text. You got it, Tanya. Thank you for doing that. Boom. There's Jennifer Thompson. Jennifer, you're going to be blown away today. $46 Pinot Noir coming to you for under 20 bucks a bottle. It's fucking crazy. Dan Jordan, what's good? Hey, good morning, Gary. How are you? Real well. Where are you from, bro? I am from Denver, Colorado. It's a pleasure. What can I help you with? Well, first off, I just want to thank you for all you do. I found your content a few years ago, and it's really helped just set my life off and a lot of folks I know as well. So thank Thank you you. for that. Thank you. Um, Of course. So my goal overall is to help people and just help people set their businesses on fire. That's what I want to do. But uh, for me to be in integrity with myself, I had to create my own business because I believe in doing what I tell people to do, right? Um, Absolutely. I'm a big fan of that. It's very much been the foundation of why I think I've been able to pop. It's because I actually did something. I didn't just start off being somebody worth listening to. I did it. And then I started talking. Keep going. Appreciate that. So I started through reselling um, of auction items and eBay drop shipping. And I also want to say that I blame and thank you for the way that I troll Facebook and Craigslist now. <laughs> that was, that's what's all. What's your best, Dan, what's your best flip? Uh, um, a clock. I found like a, a not a, not a grandfather clock, but a small clock. You know, got it for like 30 bucks, sold it for 150 so far. That's fucking so, go. Oh man, it's it's awesome. I love it. So thank you. Um, I'm also, I was in the process of moving into Amazon, wholesale and FBA, all of that. Um, but I'm also a trainer and I developed a course for networking to teach people how to network where they're serving and not asking. Um, 
I recently just moved to Colorado, uprooted my entire life to do it because again, when I tell people to go live your life, I have to do it myself first, right? So I've done that, but my resources are low. My job is gone. Um, my checks, my last couple of checks didn't come in and I feel stuck. Um, I have the, I see the opportunities. There are a ton everywhere, but I have a small amount of capital that I need the bang for the buck essentially. Right. Uh, so I'm in a place where the lip, flying products, so I push my class. When you feel stuck, what do you do? You, you fucking sp- fucking attack on all fronts. <laughs> you know, when you feel, st- you know, sell- selling the class, doing the flipping, finding stuff on Facebook Marketplace. If you're super scared of Corona, mask and gloves, go and pick it up, then take it home, take the photo, repost it, make the arbitrage on that. Like, you know, wh- what what a lot of Americans have never felt is running out of options. Like they've never really had their back to the corner. A lot of people got laid off that never got laid off in their lives. You know, a lot of people didn't save. A lot of people just got caught and that's real life. Now the good news is, look, this doesn't look like it's gonna be the Great Depression or 1987 or 9-11 or, you know, or even the Great Recession. Like this does have light at the end of the tunnel. People are gonna have to be really clamping down for the next three, six, nine months. And, And so really this goes down to like cooking for yourself with lower cost ingredients, eating bad food, potentially even 99 cent stuff. This goes into like buying nothing, buying nothing. This goes into look at your credit card. Oh shit, I'm signed up for Hulu, Netflix, and Amazon Prime. Let me fuck, you know, like this is like, you know, offense on the flipping and the course, but de- but great defense. Eight- this is time to be the 85 bears. You need to look at the fucking, like every fucking penny that comes out of your world, you need to tighten up. And even, are, are you renting right now? I am. And I've actually, I've actually listened to a lot, a lot of what you did. That's how I got out here. But I used a lot of resources to get out here. And I respect that. Listen, plenty of people got caught with timing. They just bought the building. They just bought an apartment. They just started the business. You know, life has twists and turns, right? Sure. Um, the reality is, it's like, you just got to bunker down for nine months here mentally. And I think everybody, if they just really focus on expenses, I think they, you know, even if they get kicked out of their apartment and you live in a fucking shitty place, living in a fucking, you know, shitty place for four months, like that's real talk. That's real life. Offense and defense. Just please make sure you look at every single dollar that comes out of your world and audit the fuck out of it. Fair. Can do. Appreciate it. Wish you well. Thank you. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for another episode of uh, Tea with Gary Vee. I thought we had a ton of good stuff today. I hope it brought you value. I hope you got some insights from it. Um, and, and most of all, I hope you've passed it on to friends and family. And and then uh, for everybody who saw, who did sign up for Wine Text, uh, it's coming out in an hour. If you if you uh, if you love Pinot Noir. $46 Pinot for $19 and change. It's a fucking crazy juice. So I'm super pumped about that. And uh, and I'll see everybody tomorrow. Got to go into meetings. See ya, see ya, see ya, see ya. Thank you, Dustin, on the ones and twos. Thank you, Team Gary, for Jake, Sanan, all, everybody else who held up their phones to Instagram and Twitter. Hopefully you got your stands from Amazon already, so you're good there. Big shout out to the Reddit community. Loved having you guys a part of this uh, again today. And, uh, and 212-931-5731. If you want to get on the show, if you want to get on Tea with Gary Vee, uh, 212-931-5731. Uh, text in your question. We'll see you tomorrow, 9 a.m. Eastern with Tea with Gary Vee. See ya.